So now we're going to talk about a particular type of high gain amplifier. It's an operational amplifier, or op amp for short. And the op amp is slightly different from what we showed before. It has two inputs and an output. And something that's usually not shown, but in order for it to amplify, you have to supply power. There are two DC voltage levels that are connected to this as well. We call them VCC and VEE. And VCC has to be bigger than VEE for this to work. They're very often set to be, say, plus 12 and minus 12 volts, something symmetric around zero, but they don't have to be. They just have to have the constraint that the collector and the emitter, or the emitter is smaller than the collector. The two inputs, labeled plus and minus, the minus is known as an inverting input, the positive is known as a non-inverting input. And the op amp by itself, the output voltage is this open loop gain A0 times V plus minus V minus, the difference of these two inputs. So it amplifies the difference of the two inputs. But there's a constraint here. The voltage cannot get bigger than VCC or smaller than VEE. So VEE is less than or equal to V out is less than or equal to VCC. So if V out tries to get bigger than those things, it's it basically gets stuck at those. And we say it's driven to the rails, just like that driving example we talked about a couple videos ago. Otherwise, the output voltage is the open loop gain times the difference of the two inputs. We often use this in a negative feedback way. That means that some of the output voltage has to be connected back to the inverting input. So negative feedback here would connect output voltage into the inverting input. Positive feedback would connect output voltage into the positive input. Now, this isn't exactly true, but generally we assume for op amps that A0 is big, really big, something like infinity. The input impedance is big, something like infinity. And the output impedance is small, something like zero. So it's this absolutely perfect amplifier. No huge input impedance, no output impedance, absolutely astronomical gain. And there's a couple of other things we assume that it can, if you put a changing voltage in, the op amp can keep up with however fast the voltage is changing. But those are the basic things that we do here. And when we use op amps in circuits, we're going to take advantage of these approximations. We'll come back and say, talk about how they really are just approximations and what reality is. But under the assumption of those approximations, infinite input impedance means that no current flows into the inputs. Infinite input impedance, no current can flow into this. It doesn't say anything about current flowing out of it. As much current as it needs to can go out of the op amp, but no current can flow into the inputs of the op amp. So that's infinite impedance. We sometimes call that rule number one for op amp performance. The other rule that we have says if we have negative feedback, So if we've connected part, fed, started the output voltage back into the inverting input, then the op amp is going to do whatever it needs to do to make V plus equal to V minus. It wants to make those two equal so that that difference is zero. If the gain is infinity, infinity times zero can be anything, so the output it can, it can stabilize. It's an approximation. It's not exactly true. But this rule, basically, the op amp with negative feedback tries to make that, or will make that difference zero unless something stops it. And those two rules actually allow us to analyze op amp circuits and figure out what they're going to do. So we'll take a second here, then look at an, a couple of examples of those. So the first thing we're going to do is look at a simple circuit here where we've simply taken the output and fed it into the inverting input, so we have negative feedback, and the input voltage goes into the non-inverting input. And we're going to use rule number two, negative feedback. The two inputs are being driven to the same thing. This says that V minus has to be Vn. V minus equals Vn. But V out is equal to V minus. So V out and Vn are the same. So this is a circuit where V out is a copy of Vn, a gain of one. 
it's equivalent to the emitter follower circuit we had for a transistor. The nice thing is we have the huge input impedance of the op amp, zero output impedance, and we've just made a copy of it. So that's an emitter follower circuit with an op amp. Very simple circuit, only uses one of those rules. We'll now look at a little more complicated circuit. So, okay, so we have a um, circuit here. We've put two resistors in. Now I've drawn the op amp a little bit different here. The, negative, the inverting input is up, the non-inverting is down. Both symbols are allowed. They're generally whatever one fits best in the circuit diagram is used. So I'm going to connect the non-inverting input to ground. The input comes through an input resistor and then a feedback resistor to the output. So there's definitely negative feedback. And we've grounded the inver non-inverting input. So we, the first rule we apply is the negative feedback rule number two. And that says V minus has to be equal to V plus. Well, V plus is locked to zero. So that's zero volts. So V minus has to also be zero volts. So this has to be zero volts at that point. It's not grounded. It's at the same potential as ground. And sometimes people call that a virtual ground. But it's at zero volts. Now we can look at the VN current. There's current flowing into this, IN, through this resistor. There's a voltage drop from VN to zero. So IN is VN minus zero over Rn, which is just Vn over Rn, or Ri, excuse me. That current coming in here. Rule number one says none of that current goes into the op amp. So all of that current has to flow through the feedback resistor to the output. That means that 0 volts minus the output voltage divided by our feedback has to be that same current, that I in that's flowing in, or minus V out over our feedback is V in over R I, or V out equals minus R F over R in times V in. We now have a circuit that gives us gain. That's the feedback. Basically, this ratio of resistors controls that gain. That's the sort of the beta in the thing that gives us a very precise gain. So we control the gain by the ratio of those two resistors. This circuit, we paid a little price on this one because the input voltage and input current are related by this input resistance. So this input resistance here happens to be the input impedance for the circuit. So we no longer have the huge input impedance of the op amp. It's whatever this resistor is. The output impedance is still zero because the output voltage doesn't really care on what the output current is. So we pay a little price there. But we can control this and get a, a gain. And the output is an inverted signal, sim similar to what we had with the transistor circuit. You can do other things as well. But it's those two rules applied that simply let us work these out. And again, remember, these are just approximations. They're very accurate approximations. But they are approximations. And if you hit some limit of op-amp performance, they won't necessarily be true.